Uh, so here I am. Christian's having problems in um, getting in. So he's, his tethered connection is too slow is what he's saying in chat. So um, hi, welcome everybody. Um, I'm, I'm not supposed to be here, but I'm here. So i um, happy to, to, to drive this and the recording is on. So that's good. So um, Vadim, while I'm getting the page set up, um, you want to give an update on the 4.6 release if you, if you don't mind, if you haven't already? Yeah, sure. Um, so the telemetry says it wasn't a complete flop because we have about 140 clusters upgraded and 170 4 5 clusters still on 4 to 5. Uh, apparently, the biggest problem is vSphere, which has hit all possible issues like Fedora suddenly changing. Uh, host name from default localhost to Fedora and uh, systemd resolved the problems and there was oh and there was also a problem with OSIMirror. So at this point Fedora has reverted a change of the host name back to localhost. We are waiting for this to hit our repos and we'll be able to test this here more actively. Um, Systemd resolve D is apparently fixed. We're disabling that and disabling it in in NS switch conf and in uh, network manager. So it should be working right so now. So there's supposed to be a, another fix for that because there's a SE Linux issue that's preventing um, one of the processes from working properly. It's supposed to do a symbolic link. So Hopefully that'll get fixed in Fedora, in Fedora and FCOS. So that'll that'll fix hopefully the the patch that we're doing for NS switch. Yeah, that is a bit. That's gonna bite us when folks are installing Fedora 33 stable Fedora CoreOS and upgrading to whatever we ship in uh, OKD. It's not hitting us right now because. Things work perfectly yeah. if you start with Fedora 32, but very, very soon it's going to bite us, so we're watching this closely. Uh, it's hitting me now when I do my testing. Yeah, yeah, so it's pretty bad, but it's not yeah. exactly the problem right now. Um, I mean, there are still options. Mm -hmm. We can either ask folks to use older Fedora CoreOS, or uh, we can try to come up with a workaround on our kitty site while the official fix is getting merged. Um, the largest problem by now is that we are incorrectly mirroring images because of the builder bug on our whole build form. We have finally gotten to the very end of this just yesterday. And uh, it's going to take, I, I don't have estimates right now, probably a week to rebuild the whole images so that we could mirror that. Um, it's pretty serious for OKD, but we're still debating how serious that's for our customers. So that's a pretty large mess. I think we have all the problems filed as OKD issue stacks. So I will go ahead and create a tracking issue with the status of all fixes right now for the next release. Uh, another problem I've noticed is OVN controllers are using way too many CPUs, but it appears to happen over a couple of reboots, so we need more information on that. I think it was reported to OKD as well, but we didn't have enough information to track this and pass it to the network guys, but these are probably the largest problems I've had so far. Um, meanwhile, we're working on official enhancement for uh, OKD so that we wouldn't have to rebase our installer every couple of days. Um, most of the installer folks are on PTOs right now, so we'll chase them this week because the next Friday is the feature freeze for OpenShift. And uh, soon we have Kubernetes 120 rebase landing in 4.7. This would be available in the night list. That's where we'll work right now. And hopefully 4.7 release would go 
much smoother than this one. Um, I think that's all I've got. So, um, I apologize that because I'm jumping in in late here today and I'm a little out of out of sorts. Um, the so the four point six we have a, a build of it um, that people can use. Should we be publicizing it yet? And that was a co conversation we were having in Slack the other day. So should we wait until all of these things are res resolved before we start, you know, talking about it? I think so. Blogging and everything. I think so. Yeah, we are. It's um, an official table release. It's just not recommended for vSphere folks. And vSphere folks are approximately thirty percent of our user base. If the telemetry is right. correct. So that's a pretty large chunk. Okay. Um, I also would like to have some more time with fresh updates of Sample Separator, where we ship CentOS and UBI things and get some more experience from that. That would be, if we would be publishing a blog post, that would be very interesting to mention this, that uh, it now has community samples and we can extend them in a bit faster fashion than OCP because we're pretty much independent from from this part of OCP. Uh, that should be an interesting part in the blog post, probably, yeah. Okay, well, which is good because I haven't written a blog post, so um, I kind of I kind of was listening to um, Charo um, in some of the back room who is not here. I don't think Charo managed to make it today um, either. It, this is just a week from hell, I think, for, for meetings clashing. Um, and he was having difficulty making the CRC for, um, for OKD 4.6 to work. I think he got it going, but I'm, and I think he got the, the images up and running. I don't know if anybody else um, on this call has, has tested those and played with them yet. Is there anybody who's taken a look at those? We could use some feedback on that to make sure that they're working correctly. There's silence. I love silence. It doesn't happen often on these meetings that there's silence. So yeah, I think it's a little I'm, fresh. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to do anything yet. <laughs> I've been I've been run ragged for the past like four weeks. Okay. All right. So so, since that... Vadim is oh sorry, go ahead, Dan. No, no, go ahead. Go go for it. W one thing I saw Vadim and, and other folks can chime in on this is one of the things we're seeing a lot in the Slack is people who are confused about the 32 versus 33 F costs. Um, is there a way that we can is it notate that or better let people know not to panic or to know that they should grab 32 and that it will be updated to 33? How can we manage that so that it isn't a recurring point of confusion? I think that that hinders adoption. I think we need some more documentation on this. In IPI, the starting image is managed by you, and it's going to pull the latest stable F32. In UPI, people are free to do whatever they want. We just tell them, use stable Fedora Core OS. Or you, if you have some special use case, you can use a different starting point. But it's they are just confused by the release page, which shows which Fedora OS release you end up with, but it's managed by MCO. You don't have to start with the same one. Mm -hmm. um, another problem is that some folks are thinking that if they start with the very same release, the upgrade won't go, will go faster, but it's not true because we mix in our own binaries there in install packages, it's just going to take the very same approximate time. Um, perhaps we should know this on, we should give more attention to FAQ page we have on GitHub, and probably documentation is the only answer I have right now. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm volunteering myself to do that as a question, because I've seen it come up, and I'm I'm happy to answer that and yeah. uh, put that into the FAQ then. Yeah, if you make a, a pull request, I'll make sure it gets merged. Um, if you don't have proofs, um, the other thing is to put a note on the OKD.io site as well, somewhere on the 
somewhere somewhere loud um, on probably on the download page. Um, so if you make a pull request there, I'll merge that as well. Um, so that would be that would be great. Um, I just I, I know and I so if that's the questions. I'm just looking at who's here. Is Juliana or Mike from ACM here? I think they were going to come. I wanted to make sure I didn't forget to say that they I don't see either of them. Um, or maybe in the chat. Yep. Yeah, nope. Um, the folks that came last um, meeting, I go back to the share screen here, um, from OCM, the Open um, Cluster Management Initiative, um, otherwise known as ACM inside of Red Hat. Um, they're going to, I think on Thursday, they're having their first meeting, and I'll post the link to that in the, um, the Google um, group so that if people wanted to join in that, um, that would be great. Um, the other couple of things that I have on the agenda items that I just wanted to touch on is um, we did a, a really nice uh, birds of a feather at, at KubeCon North America, and we got accepted for another round of that um, in the European time zones um, for DevConf CZ in February. So I, I'd like to rinse and repeat that. Um, so just um, I'll, I'll put a note on the, the Google group with that as well. So anybody who are other people here besides me planning on going to DevConf CZ is, I guess, my quick question. Or I've got a talk for DevConf CZ already approved, so I'm going to definitely be there. Okay, so um, I will tap on you and I will try and get Christian to come because I think it's his time zone. So um, there's one, at least one chair from, from that and we'll, we'll host that pretty much the same way that we did. Just a quick five minute overview of what OKD is and maybe a demo of the code ready container or some other new aspect that's coming up by February that we want to chat about um, and then leave the rest of it open for Q&A and um, conversations. So it's pretty easy to do. The other thing that's come up a few times um, recently, I've been talking with the folks over at um, GitHub itself um, and these GitHub actions. Um, Ooh, that's a new thing. That is a new thing, and they um, probably will come soon to one of the working group meetings, but I thought I would flag that today and throw it into the stop sharing. Again, I love blue jeans for this, the link to that. There are some already set up. Oh, this is cool. So um, take a look at those, and I'm going to invite John Bohannon um, from GitHub and one of the Red Hatters who's been working with them to come to a future um, Thing. So start look look take a look at it, um, and if it's of interest, we'll we'll give them some time on the um, the agenda. Uh, I want you to go ahead and plan for giving them a time on the agenda. I want to hear about this. Okay. So. Um, <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was interesting. Um, so that was that was good. And um, the the other thing that um, I have been besides the blog post um, and and besides the Fedora magazine thing. Um, outreach and, and on that side of the fence is um, doing thinking about doing an OKD um, summit or OKD con or something like that for contributors and working group members and end users um, because that's what everybody needs is one more virtual event but um, trying to make my virtual events be more um, very specific so that people have a purpose as opposed to generic um, so I think, and, and a reason to come. Um, and uh, the good folks at CERN, um, I don't know if Iago is not on the call here. He didn't think he would come in. Yeah, I've already got access to Hopin, but thanks, Berkus. Uh, that's a wonderful, yeah, I, I have. Hopin is good. Yeah, no, it's really good. So I, I was thinking um, there, since DevConf is in February um, and Summit is doing something in April that maybe, um, March would be a good time to do it. Um, the folks at CERN and um, is Joseph Meyer on the call here from Rodian Schwartz? Joseph? Uh, he is. is. He is here, but he is muted. I'm going to unmute everybody because you know what? I just love to hear dogs and kids barking in the background. <laughs> um, so, uh, Hello. I, I came, I came uh, two minutes ago to this meeting. <laughs> oh, so just in time to be summoned. Just in time. Yeah. So, 
what I was thinking of doing is having it sort of um, a two a two part thing. Is one is a whole bunch of end users with deployments talking about their use cases and journey and giving us their feedback and kind of in an interactive way. Um, so uh, Joseph, you had mentioned that you might be willing to share that story of you know using OKD and and, and where you're at with that. Um, and it's one of those. And the CERN folks also said that they would be happy to do so as well. So, um, and CERN, um, for Amy, who's on here, I'm pretty sure is using it on OpenStack. Um, so, and they have, um, they're just migrating from 4.5 to 4.6. So they're going to be one of the first um, production um, non-working group members, because I know some of you, uh, Bruce, I see your face, and um, there was a couple other folks who were using it in production. Um, but but Diane, I, I'd be interested in doing that also. Okay, and um, sh sorry, I'm not recognizing your That's name. John Fortin. And which John company? John Fortin. Which Market company? America. Okay, so. Market America in Greensboro. Okay, so I would, you know, I'd take everybody and um, yeah. maybe have four or five end users talk about their journeys, what they're doing, give us our feedback and have the working group members listening to that um, with as much or as little confirmation bias as possible, but just listening to that and then, um, since Josh is on here and Amy is here, one of the things that I'd like to do is um, work a bit more on our contribution ladder and onboarding people um, into the working group and figuring out, I know Vadim, one of the things that you've been muttering in the background is how do we get more um, like code, actual code donations from the community as opposed to waiting for Vadim to get off PTO and tell us what's in the latest release. So um, I would like to spur that side of the conversation in 2021 is to try and figure out how to, because um, it's very, it's difficult because OpenShift, the product is really the main driver engineering resource wise for OKD. But there are other places where we could do better. And we, I've been preaching externally about wonderful contribution ladders and how to become a maintainer and all that stuff about other projects. And I would like to apply some of that to OKD um, itself and figure out how that is. So I, that would give us from now until March to really have conversations about what that would look like. Um, and Vadim, I, I really value your insights into how to how people can do that and help so that um, you and Christian and, and even even the Charo building the code ready container images on his home lab um, and figuring out that part. But that I, I'm thinking if people are on board for that and I'm just looking in the chat, I, I'm thinking um, that yeah, I'd actually be interested in, in being involved in that because I do want to become a more involved contributor. I, I was on a couple of weeks ago and just saying how how can I get more involved, you know, especially with code since you know I am a developer and stuff like that. So yeah, no, that although was... everybody's probably tired of seeing my email um, inside of GitHub at this point, so I'm probably too prolific. No, um, it definitely needs to be discussed. The problem is um, if an outside users have some low-hanging fruits in OKD, that means we're doing our jobs very, very poorly. Uh, since we base our stuff on OCP, and it's supposed to get properly tested by CI, and then trickles down into OKD, you are not supposed to, to find issues immediately on installation or right after update. That means we, on our CI side, need more uh, I don't know, more tests, more uh, attention to that. Um, there is, however, a huge area of contributions to OKD, as in how do we extend it? How do we, which components community would use more actively than um, enterprise consumers? For instance, something related to uh, let's encrypt something like certbot included in OKD payload itself would be more interesting for the community uh, and OCP doesn't need that. So these extension points are probably where we should be contributing code. There is a bunch of interesting um, optional operators, for instance, folks at uh, Episary 
organization in uh, OpenShift part have developed their own route monitor, basically a black box exporter which looks that you, all of your routes are available and, and served correctly. That won't ever get into OCP code base originally, for instance. It probably belongs to OLM. So that discussion, which operators or components should live is optional on OLM and which should be part of OKD itself, that's an interesting discussion. We probably want to minimize our our surface of, of what we maintain and put more stuff into OLM, but tweaking OKD as a distribution um, and setting some pre-installing some subscriptions from OLM, for instance, that's an interesting topic to discuss. Uh, there's, but there's, there's also the the other end of the, the thing too is that I'm getting um, inquiries from um, the product management team. Um, a lot a lot of people who are coming to OpenShift um, for the first time that are um, potential users of that come to the open source side of things. So many of you um, maybe didn't come in through the OpenShift.com world, you came in through the open source side, um, and making that um, more of a seamless um, experience for people. So I know um, I've been talking to the developer.com folks about um, having um, OKD be one of the um, tools that they use when they're doing demos and things like that and making that a smoother thing. So, um, and also um, hearing from people who are are in the community and, and how do we get that our feedback more fluidly into the product management um, epics and things like that I think is, is something that I'd like to, to um, figure out. Uh, uh, we do it um, by sharing our stories and you know Market America and Roding Schwartz and CERN and you know putting yourselves on stage is one way because the product managers and the engineers all listen to those talks over and over again um, which is great. Um, but I think there needs to be a, a, an even more um, sort of a feature request process of some ilk that we build out so that it gets up and in. And there's Mike. All right. Uh, Mike Ng joined a minute ago. Um, and I did mention this. Um, and this is Mike Ng from the OCM folks, the Open Cluster Management folks, is just put in, dropped into the chat that this Thursday, which I think is the 10th, um, at 1530 UTC, there is going to be um, their very, very first open cluster management community um, project. So um, if you're interested, they were the ones that spoke at the last meeting. <coughs> so that's so that's what um, I, like 2021 um, more more seamless into the CI CD workflow and the testing stuff. I think that's a, a big goal for us to get that done, as well as the build process for code ready containers to be more automated. Um, from my perspective, but I would really like um, John and Joseph and people who are actually using it out there in the world, um, what what are the features that you're looking for that we don't have um, and where and where we we need to be working um, and to push that up the pipeline to more visibility to the product managers is really kind of there key and how you can you know how can we get your contribution if you're willing John where can we put you to work besides you know making changes to the the documentation and the OKD site and creating recipes what else can we we um I'll test VMware the vSphere <laughs> yeah I, and I think <laughs> honestly because that I mean for the last two weeks that's been my pain point and I and I I'm more than willing. I've, I've actually gone through the process of building my own packages and stuff and, and making changes and then running locally to make sure that they work. So I've become a lot more familiar with that process. Yeah. Still lots that I don't know, and I'm more than happy to help the team. This would be incredibly helpful. First of all, again, because of the Fedora 33 change, we are now unable to fetch the log bundles from CI. We're still discussing if it's a bug we need to fix in OKD or uh, CI should use modern uh, SSH keys because of the crypto policy change in Fedora. RSA keys are not being uh, being rejected. So internally, we're yeah. discussing that. 
I ran and into that the way, actually. Yeah, the way we work, we don't touch clusters manually. We just ask CI to build it. If it passes, then it's good. If it doesn't pass, there is no way we can override this. And uh, that takes quite a lot of time and really hampers our productivity right now, but that's an important decision we need to make. But meanwhile, there is a bunch of proposed patches we need to test, like fresh system D, freshest network manager. Uh, it would be great to help Fedora CoS folks to start with Fedora 34, like a Rawhide build they wanted to track. And the sooner we start this, the less problems we encounter later. Uh, at least they won't hit us at the same time, just like they did the months ago. Um, when it comes to OpenShift code, like um, sending code straight to OpenShift, it's a bit tricky because you have to start at 4.7. And if you really want to, to try it out in 4.6, you would have to file a bug. That bug needs to be triaged by folks and approved that we want this to be backported. Adds a lot of bureaucracy. You, don't want to get, you probably don't want to get involved in this, but if you really want to and you're hitting a specific bug, we'll definitely help with that. That's that's not an issue. Uh, it's just not trivial because we don't have like a. I cannot think of some low-hanging fruit we need to fix right now, and we could we could bring people through. Um, although. That sounds like a um, that sounds like something we should have. We should have a list of bugs we would like to teach folks to how to, how to work with with OKD and go through the whole process. Yeah, I think maybe um, even as part of the contributor summit con thing, we might even have a like a little hackathon where we make um, even just walk people through fixing a bug. Um, and so well, I, I tell you from my experience, like yesterday, you know, I went through and there's a, a couple of bugs out there that I wanted to test for the fixes. So I, I took the code from GitHub and then applied the fixes and then built MCO and then applied it to my cluster. So, but that was not a greatly documented process, um, you know, on how to do that. Some of it, you know, there's one page that was, okay, it's sort of there. So I figured it out, but, you know, those are pieces that, you know, if, if you want people to help develop or help test um, patches and stuff that probably need a little bit more guidance on um, in order to get there, because there's a lot there to understand. Um, and then, you know, how do you, how do you apply that, you know, your own package that you built, your own container, and how do you get that into your own installer and test with? That whole process is a little uh, interesting to figure out. How's that? Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. I wanted to add a comment on the whole bug triage, debugging, kind of informational side of things too. Uh, it might be worthwhile to kind of go through some of the hot topics that are coming up in Bugzilla at one of these virtual events to kind of show, I guess, more of the community what are the issues that are hitting the head of master right now, or the you know the tip of our main trunk development, so we could help to propagate those issues further out because. You know, Vadim was pointing this out, you know, when, when we're working on OCP as a product, you know, a lot of the stuff we're looking at is, you know, coming out for the plus one version, and that's probably a version or two away from what we're seeing in AD. So, like, if anything we can do to help reduce the information gap between what OKD users are experiencing and what we're pushing at the forefront, I think will help us to overcome, you know, this situation of how do we take more community? Because I'd love to see that personally. Yeah. And one thing that might be, oh, go ahead, Diane, sir. No, 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 go, Jamie. No. One of the things I think might be helpful is for us to somehow collate a list of folks that are testing and debugging and what particular platform they're using. So, for example, if I knew all of the vSphere folks, we could all get together and, and have a little chat about, okay, did you notice this? Did you notice this? Right now, everything's sort of scattered and you don't necessarily, unless you're on a call with someone and you hear them talking about what particular platform they're using, you don't really know. Like I know now know John is, you know, from this and some conversation online, he's vSphere as well. I think it would be helpful if we somehow tracked that so that we could say, okay, here's something I'm seeing in vSphere. It seems specific to vSphere. Who are the other vSphere folks that can bounce this off of? 
and I'd be happy to arrange like a Zoom or a Blue Jeans for v vSphere, like a sub working group of people. But I think we we started doing that with um, when we did the OKD marathon. Um, started like trying to get the content created for that um, back that was KubeCon EU in August, um, and started to identify who who were the people who were willing to like say, hey, I I'll do DigitalOcean or I'll do vSphere or I'll do this, but then to go the next step and you know self-identify maybe in the group um, uh, which one you are you're willing to be a tester for and then creating a space for that um, in in the repo somewhere um, and hosting you know maybe a, a bi-monthly all the vSphere spokes or like when vSphere is a problem like it is right now I'm sorry Joseph you came in late um, so <laughs> yeah we're we're having some issues with the vSphere um, but um, I think that, I mean, I'm happy to facilitate that to, and to do that and host that. But I think we also have to, um, would have to have one of the technical co-chairs like Vadim or Charo or Christian to come and, and be the facilitator for that conversation, or at least the listener and maybe not the answerer of all questions, but um, to have one of the OpenShift engineering team um, and, and um, Mike, you know, you know, somebody to re report back, I think is the key here is to keep the notes and to report back. Um, and if we want to kick off with vSphere, um, I'm happy to, to do another one um, on that and maybe timing it with when some of these issues are resolved, Vadim. Um, do you think next week at the same time, um, by then we'd have one that we could do a vSphere um, triage session maybe? That would be what I would call it at this point. Oh yeah, the the vSphere specific problem should be fixed this week. Okay. It shouldn't take that long. We're literally waiting for system D update and MCO probably. Uh, but the OC mirroring problem, pretty huge. I don't have an estimate for that, and I don't want to break another stable release for the folks who are doing mirroring. So the nightly in vSphere should be fixed very soon, but stable release will probably want to hold it off until we fix the build farm problem. Um, again, I'll file uh, a tracking bug where we will track all the problems and discuss the, the stuff. Yeah, so it, I'm just thinking, because these, these meetings we have are bi-weekly, so on the other week we could do a vSphere one, and if we wanted to do a vSphere specific one next week, if I'm I'm happy to host next, you know, this UTC time next week to do a v, to call out to all the vSphere folks, or we can wait until after the holiday. Um, if that if you think that's better, Vadim, do we wait longer, or should, are you okay with doing something maybe next week for vSphere just to? Um, let's give let's give it a try next week. Okay. So I'll, I'll and send, yeah, the holidays are. Tricky and see how it goes. We might not have to meet every single week just to just yeah. to put out the fire. Uh, I just I'm know. thinking alternate like um, next next in between do vSphere then do a work a regular working group meeting and then the following one pick one of the other platforms um, you know and you know do a bare metal one um, you know. Vsphere. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, like, I, I mean, I'm, I am totally happy to get involved and help, like, liaise as much as I can between what's happening in the machine API team and what's happening here in OT. I think, you know, it's interesting to see. It's interesting to me, at least, to see all the discussion about Vsphere because I think we have uh, an internal impression, at least, that we, you know, we're not totally happy with where we're at with the Vsphere. Um, status right now. You know, we'd like it to be more stable. And I think we see a lot of problems with vSphere. Um, and I would love to be able to see a situation under which we're taking community patches and incorporating them into the installer, into the machine API, whatever it happens to be. Um, so yeah, like if there's a vSphere triage meeting and, and we come up with a list of issues or whatnot, like I'm certainly willing to help like try and match those against either what we're looking at internally or how we could coordinate uh, a patch coming from the community and landing in one of the, the OCP repos. Because I think it, it's completely doable. We've taken community patches before. 
Um, and I'd love to see that kind of like accelerate in the future. Yeah. So, um, Mike, if you and maybe Vadim can come t to next week, I will post something on the, the Google the Google group um, and just use this exact same time slot because it works for my schedule now that I've adjusted for time zones. Um, and, and then just use that and then and maybe just call it the vSphere tree update or triage um, conversation. And um, I'll call it triage because that's what came out of my mouth and now you're all thinking triage. Um, and then uh, I'll let Mike and Vadim mostly drive it um, and we'll have a notes document like we have for the meeting notes and we can share that with the engineers and the product managers and I'll, I can let you guys, um, maybe Mike if you'll own that, um, facilitating the conversation with the engineering teams. Because um, I, I th you know, the other, the other part of it is, is the product managers are looking for this feedback um, and, and the engineering teams are looking for this feedback. So if we can give it to them, that'll help and give them am ammunition for putting more resources yeah, on. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm totally happy to help. I mean, you know, I'm, I don't want to say unfortunately, but like my my sphere of influence is kind of limited in this respect. I mean, I'm I'm working with the cloud team and machine API. So like I'm looking a lot of the cloud, a, the cloud providers and our team is owning that code for OCP, um, but we don't necessarily dive deep into the installer stuff. So if we start to get into installer issues, I might have to get other people involved. But at least if we're talking about cloud providers and the machine API layer, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to put my back into it and help however. Okay, cool. That'd be good. I'm just looking at the, uh, so that I'm happy to facilitate that and, 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 and I'm going to float a few dates, probably not this working group. Do we, when's the next meeting that we have scheduled? I think we have one for some obscene time close to, to, um, to the holidays. Um, It'd be the 22nd. The 22nd. Are we really yeah, going to? I'm going to miss that one. <laughs> I, yeah, that was the, the the other question I had. Is that? I, mean, yeah. I think we can all just kind of say um, no. We're not. Uh, we should probably. <laughs> yes. I don't know why you. That no. if, unless there's like something um, everybody needs to do that maybe we'll do this vSphere triage to make sure that the vSphere folks are all happy. And have something to test with um, next week, and they, they can play on their holidays. But I'm thinking the 22nd, we might have to, you know, call it, it's a wrap. So, but that's there's that's, something I wanted to mention. Oh, sorry, Dan. Just something no, no, I want to mention. Is the, the, the something John brought up earlier. Um, you know, uh, and when it comes to hacking and kind of like replacing components inside of uh, OpenShift and whatnot, are you know, we are aware of this at least in terms of some of the engineering teams. And we're trying to write more documentation and blogs kind of addressing, you know, how do you get in here and start hacking these things? Um, we've started to add this to the machine API repo. Uh, so if you look at the machine API operator, you'll start to see, uh, we have like some hacking documents there and we're starting to add more. But, you know, one of the things that our team is taking on is we would like to document showing our users, you know, how to hack on these components, you know, how to replace components, how to add your own cloud provider, these kind of things. Um, unfortunately, my, I had a talk all about that for DevConf, but it got rejected. So. Well, you know I'll give you space for it. Yeah. So I actually, um, and I know Amy Merrick's on here, and so and she is um, a documentation person par excellence, um, and a community person par excellence. If we can coerce her maybe into helping us um, coach people on how to do better documentation. Um, and to contribute to the company, that would be an excellent thing to do too, to set up a, a session on that. Um, yeah, and, that's, that, and also work on contributing guide and stuff. That would be wonderful, Amy. Um, I, I would love that help um, and that would be great. And then, um, so we could do that. And um, I, I'm thinking, you know, the more we can do to get um, the contributor ladder to be clear, hacking guides, how to contribute. We have that one page that Vadim put the link in there for on contributing, but that is good, but it's not sufficient, obviously. That's where I started and then I sort of figured it out from there. So it was a good starting spot, but there's, I'm, I mean, I'm putting notes together as I do this and I'll, and I might even put a video together or something that, you know, that goes through the process, but um, it's good. 
if you're technical, you know, if you're not technical, it's, it's challenging. Yeah. And Jimmy, did I, I did, if you put that um, recipe in as a, a request, a pull request against um, OKD.io, um, I'll add it to the recipe page um, for OKD.io. Um, and even the, and I know Charo was going to do some documentation around making that clearer how to add your recipes into there. Um, so there's there's a lot of room for improvement. Um, is what I'm saying. And I think 2021 is is when I really want to focus on that, um, making sure that we have all that documentation aligned uh, there. And if anyone, I was looking at the calendar for things in March circling back to doing like an OKD end user summit, contributor summit kind of thing. Um, if anyone has, I looked at my calendars and it looked like March was the emptiest month um, to do something and to try and do it in uh, using um, blue jeans or Zoom and making it highly interactive as opposed to um, uh, Entrato and maybe use Hopin as, as um, Josh was pointing out to. Um, but something that's that would give us a, the ability to do like to do hack things um, and to actually collaborate and work on some of this documentation um, live. So I'd like to host a few more like working sessions like that in 2021 as well. So we just fix things. Dan, I know I know you you've talked a lot about like our virtual meetups and everything and all that stuff. What like. Any thoughts about doing like a, an OKD like hackathon for a couple of days next week or something? Like we could just get together, triage some issues, and then work through them over the course of a, a day or two, or just allow people to experiment, see what they come up with, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So what I'm what I'm always happy to what I think what what I'd like to do is do this triage session for vSphere, um, and then um, if we have and we can go all day, um, you know, as long as people want. Um, and keep the keep the lines open to do that. I'm just looking at the calendar here. Just excuse me a second and see what next week looks like before I put my foot in my mouth and. and uh, yeah, I, I think that if we did um, the triage meeting and maybe made it longer. Um, like the first part would be actually setting up, listening to people's issues and stuff like that. And I'm happy to extend um, the time period um, for as long as people want. Um, I might not be the the best person to to run the hackathon, but um, but let's let's do the first triage thing there. And it may we can also do it the next day or um, yeah. It gets it gets easier as we get close to Christmas because people are leaving and <laughs> leaving me alone. So, um, but yeah, I'm happy to set up, um, a, you know, an interactive Zoom account or if Zoom is your preference or BlueJeans, whichever is. Zoom allows us to do breakouts a little bit nicer than um, BlueJeans has nothing for that. Um, so, and I have a Zoom account now that lets me do that. So it, yeah, that would be, that would be good. And maybe the doc stuff, but let's do the first triage session next week See what comes from that, who shows up, and what issues we have. So, and then I'm happy to, and then I'm happy to do like a reoccurring hack stuff so that we do more than just talk in the working group, um, which is good. We need to see your faces um, and get your feedback, but yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't want to suggest anything different for next week. I think the triage sounds great. I was just thinking maybe like, you know, I'm looking optimistically towards next year when we can hopefully travel again and whatnot, and we get back to like KubeCon and OpenShift Commons and whatnot. And I just, it kind of makes me wonder, like, it would it would be really cool if we could do like an OKD focused get together or something where we all kind of are able to meet up and and do some hacking and whatnot, and you know, just yeah, yeah like have fun, you know, hackathon kind of stuff. Yeah, I I think optimistically, um, I'm seeing people in Vancouver um, open source summit said in August that they're going to try and host something in person in August for open source, the Linux Foundation thing. Um, and then um, KubeCon North America is scheduled for Los Angeles in October, um, which I think is, is more viable. Um, you know, I, I don't have a crystal ball and I haven't been vaccinated yet. Um, my name's not William Shakespeare. 
and um, I'm not in the UK, but um, I, I'm hoping that um, I, that we do optimistically, but I think that we could do some stuff well before that virtually um, using Zoom and the breakout stuff, because basically that's the three-day class that I'm in right now that I'm going to have to hop out at uh, is, is, is all done in Zoom and is all with breakouts in Zoom, and it, it's working pretty nicely. And Intersource Summit or APAC did a nice thing um, with breakouts and, and hacking. So a group of people could be assigned to go to a room, work on something, like led by Amy to fix the, you know, the onboarding documentation, for example. Um, and that. So, uh, yeah, and Joseph, you're always nervous. So um, that that's sort of what I was thinking. Is there anything else that um, I, I've been talking a lot that other people have that we should have talked about today? Any problems people are seeing? I saw uh, a finger go up by um, Neil. Was that just a, a random? No, that was just me saying that everything's been fine. Oh God, that's amazing coming from you. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So, so um, I, I have a question since, again, I, I, I have multiple questions. So a lot of times, you know, we, I, I want to have a conversation with the developer, and GitHub doesn't seem to be a great place to have discussions. You know, it's good for bug tracking and stuff. Should we be using Slack for discussions in the, in the dev portion of, you know, OpenShift dev for, you know, development questions like we've been having today, you know, that are sort of outside of, you know, bug resolution and stuff, or is there a better way or another place to do it? <laughs> well, unfortunately, Slack is the place that we're, that in theory, we're supposed to potentially be doing it. Um, the problem There's... with Slack is that it's Slack, but other than that, yeah, that's, yeah. that's typically the place. There's a new set of features, and I haven't played with them yet, and maybe somebody else has, in GitHub um, called GitHub Discussions um, that I haven't played with at all. Um, that that might be something we could use as well. Um, and we could always, you know, the GitHub Actions team will be coming sh sooner than later. Um, but there's another whole group of people over at GitHub that have been trying to promote using their discuss discussions um, capabilities. Um, has anyone here used that yet? Or am I just nope. bringing another new feature from GitHub to the forefront here? Uh, okay. Please, no more there's messages. Gitter as well, but there's yeah. Gitter as well, but like we are not using either of them right now in the community. So yeah. I, I I would like to keep stuff in the open as much as possible and tied to like the GitHub um, community projects agenda and that um, just so that there's one central location, but that's me um but well still, then we could probably just set up gitter connected to the github projects on there and let people start discussing there but it feels too s separate for me from and, and i know everybody's not thrilled with slack but the openshift dev and the openshift user conversations i think that's where you really get the direct connectivity and if we silo ourselves off as just okd folks we're not going to have that connection yeah but yeah. people have to have to be able to get into the Slack in the first place. I mean, there are a couple devs. Hang if we're talking about the Kubernetes Slack, there are a couple OpenShift devs who do hang out in that OpenShift dev channel. I mean, I'm one of them. But, you know, so, you know, for those who wanted to start a more developer-oriented conversation, like, you could certainly try there, um, you know, and then if the conversation well, the goes... The places I'm aware of right now are basically the OpenShift dev, open well, three places, I guess, OpenShift dev, OpenShift users, um, but also GitHub, and GitHub doesn't seem like a great place to ask questions about how to do something. And yeah, yeah. I and, and, I, and I don't want to do that. Um, OpenShift Dev on Slack is, I'm not sure what I think of it yet. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you want to ping me, if you want to ping me on IRC, yeah. I'm El Miko on Freenode. Yeah, it's, it's also, um, there's the fine line of um, customer support versus and technical support for customers versus um, you get what you pay for. Um, so oh, no, I understand, but that's part of that's part of the reason why I want to help why I want to help do things is because 
I'm a consumer of the of the open source stuff and not just OpenShift or OKD, but you know, in order to pay back, I want to make sure that I'm contributing. Yeah, no, I, I know. I mean, and that's what it, what we, um, yeah. So I think I, I, right now what I'm trying to do is make sure that um, I know that Vadim and, and Christian pay attention and Charo pays attention and Mike, you pay attention, but keep the visibility of OKD in the OpenShift dev and user um, in the mm -hmm. that so that the engineers are cognizant that there's a lot of good feedback um, coming from OKD um, and the OKD working group. So that's that's it, rather than create a, a separate channel. But I, I, I haven't played with the GitHub discussion stuff too, I think. Yeah, and I haven't seen the Kubernetes world um, folks adopt it in any way yet. So that was just an ask. Um, and one of the things I think, um, oh, sorry, Diane, go ahead. Oh, no, go, go for it. One of the things that I've seen um, just in the past couple of weeks um, is in terms of conversations on GitHub or conversations in the channel or whatnot, it can help for folks that are in the working group to participate in them or, or folks who are friendly to to OKD and, and to, to, to Christian and Vadim, et cetera, in terms of, um, I've seen a couple of tickets come in where folks were like really sort of demanding to Vadim and, and Christian and other folks. And I think if you, if you participate in the oh, channels and are friendly <laughs> and supportive, it sort of lifts the conversation up a little uh -huh. bit more so that um, folks, it reinforces the notion that Vadim and Christian are busy and they need mm -hmm. people to actually, you know, get the documentation into their bug reports when they're submitted and things like that. Like, so I think having conversations out in public helps sort of reinforce a, a positive culture in dealing with, yeah. um, with the folks who are actually doing a lot of development on this. Yeah. Just uh, a side thought. Yeah. I think one, one of the things that, that I'm trying to do internally at Red Hat is to raise the visibility of um, OKD within the product managers conversations. And so get your feedback back to them um, so that they realize that, um, like I think, John, um, you're using the commercial version and the, the um, open oh, source. We're, we're, we're all open source, Origin and OKD. Okay, perfect. So there's, I guess, Rodi and Schwartz is, there's a couple, there's a number of people who have both OCP and mm -hmm. OKD. And so there's that, that conversation that I'm trying to make sure people realize that this is, yeah, one of the on ramps to being a customer, um, and you know, raise that visibility. And it's that's so that's part of part of one of the things I'm trying to do this year too is to really sh focus on um, end users and, and what they're doing and what your workloads are, um, because I think there's also like with the Open Data Hub team, they're very interested in hearing people who have AI and ML and the edge folks and um, you know each of the other silos and the telcos and stuff. Um, that are market specific, and then we once we once they know that someone's using OKD and maybe using it in a an edge scenario, then we can get some of the resources from the edge team to help us as well and be aware of it. And and be, the more visible we are, um, the more more likely they'll they'll come and and pay attention and take your feedback. Um, yeah, there are many roads to paying customers. <laughs> Many, Diane, many ways. Diane, I just wanted to give a, a heads up to you too. If, if you're ever looking for more allies inside of Red Hat messaging, between, please reach out because I raise this all the time with our team about like the issues that I see users bringing to the OKD like forums are kind of different than what we see coming in from customers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is probably something I, I imagine resonates with, with Vadim and Christian and whatnot, you know, for those of us who are like Red Hat employees and we're working on OCP, but we also really interested in OKD or we're working on OKD, it can get tough for us to like turn it off, you know, cause it's like, we're going a hundred percent trying to make the product really good. And then we turn to the community and it's like, the community has got a lot of asks and it's difficult sometimes for us to say, you know, well, I'm going to, I'm going to put more effort into the product or community. It's like, we don't, we don't necessarily look at it that way. So, I would love to see us have a stronger OKD community that like traditional Red Hat products, there's a bigger communication between the community and the product folks. Like I would love to see that personally. Yeah, no, I think I think that's my goal um, really um, with and, and raising up the visibility of the end users in this community. Um, so Jamie, you'll get a UMish 
request to talk at something and you know every er, everybody will um at some point uh and dato when you were you doing stuff neil and, and others and and bruce at bcit so really showcasing this coming year you know some of the the stuff that you're doing um and by recording the videos and you know there's you know the guy from well, what's his waleed from um armaco um in saudi you know those folks are you know this is really a, a great group of folks who show us what some of the problems are and you know what problems you're trying to solve and that's really key to us innovating period you know uh, that's been my been my sort of mantra the past six months here is that really the end users are driving the innovation these days in open source so um, you'll hear me pontificate I do have to end this call now because um, I am in a class um, and <laughs> supposed to be learning something, um, but I always learn when I'm hanging out here with you guys. So um, thank you for today. And I will um, go into the working group um, mailing list and um, we'll get you guys uh, an appointment for next week to do a vSphere triage. And I'm hoping, Vadim, that you'll be available to come to that if that's good. Yeah, cool. And Mike, and I'll, I'll let you guys mostly lead it. And... Um, I'll just record it. You know I can't never can't ever shut up, which is what I have to do right now. Thanks, Diane. Thanks, Thank you. Guys. Take care. There Thank goes you. my lunch hour. Bye, y'all. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>